really excited to be talking to our upcoming guests, and I know a lot of people on the internet as well, and folks here in the Connecticut area, because one of the top musicians in the land, Mr. Sonny Thompson, also known as Sonny T, multi-talented bassist, is going to be my special guest. You know him from the Minneapolis days. Uh, he was a member of Prince in the New Power Generation. He's worked with so many great musicians, Wayne McFarland and also Michelle Portal. I hope I pronounced that right. My girlfriend will kill me with my French. And also Georgia, he has been uh, writing songs. And in fact, Prince in uh, interviews says this man is uh, his biggest influence as a guitar player. We'll find out all he has to say. And most importantly, Sons of Almighty with Michael Bland, Tommy Barbarella, Jeff Lee Johnson, Julius Collins. And right now, we welcome to the upper room, Mr. Sonny Thompson. How you doing, Sonny? Oh, I'm doing all right. I'm chilling. Chilling? <laughs> yeah. How things uh, with Sons of Almighty? I know uh, the CD release party was um, March 25th, right? Yeah, it was actually really cool. I mean, we had a really nice crowd. You know, it was very inspirational, you know. I mean, for just, you know, just going on just off the cuff and just going on and playing, you know, mm -hmm. and releasing a CD like that, you know. It was actually really fun. People were into it because it's, it's a very motivational type of cd it's not the same old you know i got your baby and you know <laughs> yeah it's not that type of uh you know approach to it and you know it was real really positively receptive now um you and michael have been uh working together for such a long time rhythm uh, on drums and bass and uh right you know you guys have been working on separate projects and also together what was uh the conversation how long have you guys been talking about putting together sons of almighty oh man it's been i don't know about maybe two or three years actually mm -hmm. when the idea had first came up it was like two or three years ago but the process has taken over a year okay to get done you know because between other things that we've had to do you know and that would stop the recording process, you know, because somebody would end up, Michael go out on tour with Maxwell or Chaka Khan or somebody. I'd go over to Europe and tour with somebody, you know, and so mm -hmm. there's these breaks in between, you know. So we finally just, you know, and everybody's locked in and got time to finish it. It was just wonderful. Now, is that frustrating, um, having to go out, you know, having the recording broken up, or you just know it's part of the music business? Well, it's just part of the business, right? You know? Mm-hmm. And you come back stronger after that? Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Definitely. No doubt about it. Now, you talked um, about it's kind of taking a chance when, when we talked uh, last week. And um, I'm feeling it. And I know a lot of people are feeling um, the positive message. And I, I don't think it's overbearing. If um, a Have you found most people receptive to it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, I'm not trying to preach to nobody. And I'm not trying to tell nobody how to live. Mm -hmm. It's just, a, it's, it's, you know... A, a certain group of musicians' opinions and their feelings on what they believe. You know, it's not um, me trying to tell nobody what to do or where to do it or how to do it, you know. Right. I'm nobody's judge. I'm just here to do what, you know, I, I'm inspired to do and let that translate through to my music. I mean, if the, if you dig it, that's fine. If not, I'm, you know, God bless you, too. Right. <laughs> you and, I, and I think as soon as we hear the first uh, few seconds of... Uh the CD. We know Sonny T's on there, you know, with, <laughs> because I put it on and I said, oh, there's Sonny, you know. <laughs> because, loud, huh? Yeah, because you, you, you got that sick way of playing it. And it's just great that, um, <laughs> you know, the way you started out. And um, of course, I mean, you've written some great songs with um, Michael and Julius on here. Oh, yeah. Um, one of them being uh, Thy Kingdom Come, mm -hmm. which uh, I, I don't know if that's their all all there is to the song but the last 30 seconds i'd like to hear that go on for another three or four minutes oh <laughs> yeah um when you were working on a such like uh track like thy kingdom come um what was the genesis of that track um are you talking lyrically or rhythmically I, I guess i guess a little bit of both but um what what did you bring to that song more more rhythm uh, on More it? More of the rhythm at edge of this. Julius wrote the lyrics to it. Okay. Um, for me, um, we, cut, we cut that track in Italy basically when we were on tour, and then we brought it back and finished it. Okay. You know, so it was, it was basically, the, it was a structured tune, but then there was a lot of the guitar parts that are improvisational, basically. 
<laughs> so, so you're playing just the guitar? Or you're playing? Uh, I mean, play just guitar bass guitar. Bass. You're playing a little both, right? Yeah. How, how about um, when you grew? You grew up in Minneapolis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you want to talk a little bit about uh, how you got into music? I mean, you're playing bass and guitar. What got you started with that? Oh, I, well, I um, this was years ago. I hate to go way back, but. You know, I just, uh, Jimi Hendrix record accidentally came to my house, and that's what got me started. Mm -hmm. Because I was listening basically to, like, just heavy jazz. And West Montgomery and Charles Mingus and Miles. I was way off into that, you know, back in the day when it was just straight up, straight ahead jazz. You know, that's all I used to listen to. Mm -hmm. And then this stuff came, and it just changed my whole life. So I uh, got, a, got a drum set, started playing that, and then I switched and got a, Stratocaster and started playing guitar. Then they got in the band playing guitar, and then the bass player quit, so I had to learn how to play bass, and I've been basically switching back and forth between bass and guitar all, ever since then. So you started out uh, Jimi Hendrix with the left hand, too, right? Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> w w were you left handed just to try to idolize him, or just that? Well, that's your no, natural? it was just that's how it happened. Uh huh. I had no idea. Right. You know, until I seen Electric Ladyland, I was like, oh, okay. Right. <laughs> He's cool. Right. <laughs> well, um, you ever think of, with the Suns, do you guys do some Hendrix stuff? Um, possibly. Right. Possibly, if it fits into what we're saying. <laughs> right, yeah. And you, yeah. Could, you could change up a few lyrics on there, too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, Sonny, we're going to get into um, one of the tracks right now, which you co-wrote with uh, Mike Lennon and uh, Julius Collins. Julius Collins previously with Greasy Meal. and. Mm hmm uh, we'll talk more about how you and Michael got together and uh, what you got planned for the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, we'll dig up uh, Thy Kingdom Come from the Sons of Almighty, the Great Tribulation. My guest is Mr. Sonny Thompson, and you're listening to The Upper Room with Joe Kelly. And you know what? Oh, that was going to be the second track I played. A little miscue there. That is uh, Sons of Almighty um, from Sons of Almighty. We'll get into Thy Kingdom Come a little later on, but... It was cool. <laughs> I, I played the wrong track there. But uh, anyways, you, you co-wrote um, uh, Sons of Almighty, and mm -hmm. um, that that's a banging track. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, um, basically, I had had that track. I recorded that at home, and I was telling Michael about it. And I was like, man, you got to just check this groove out, man. Let's see what we can do with it. And... Um, he came over, brought his drum set over, and then we recorded to my machines. And, you know, this, I mean, this is like taking a long, this was a long process, basically. Because mm -hmm. what we did, we took it in the studio and re-recorded the whole thing. And then Juice, he wrote some lyrics for it and put some lyrics to it. And uh, another guy, um, what is his, I can't remember his name. Greg, Greg Sane. He, he co-wrote some of the lyrics to the song, too, actually. And, um... Once, once the whole thing came together, it turned out just fantastic. I mean, the, the same attitude that I was feeling when I first wrote the music to it, it, it came out almost how I envisioned it, you know. How did, how did the song turn out live? Is that one of your favorites? Oh, it's one of my favorites because uh -huh. it's just thrashing, you know. Right, right. <laughs> you know, it's just pulsating, you know. And you had the uh, CD release party over at the Quest in Minneapolis. Yeah. Um, you, you play a lot of clubs a, around there. In fact, tonight, if uh, people are listening on the Internet to our broadcast, uh, Sonny Thompson will be appearing, I believe, at Bunkers tonight, right? Yeah, it's yeah. just an uh, open jam. Open jam? Yep, you know, it's just you let your hair down type of thing every Monday night. And, uh, you know, until everybody goes out on tour, and then it's a different band. <laughs> who do you usually have uh, show up for that on a regular basis? Huh? Who usually shows up on a regular basis? Oh, Prince. Uh-huh. <laughs> he, he just tries to come down there and hang out and see what's going on. Right. Still still uh, checking out your moves, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, who's sitting in for Mike if he's not in town? Um, Sometimes Stokely from Men Condition. Okay. Um, uh, The guy that used to play with... Uh, Juice's group, he would sit in, but he's he's with the Blue Men now. Oh yeah, Dave uh, Ananini. Yeah, Dave. Ananini. Yeah, he's a good friend of mine. He's he's cool. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's great man. Play with Shannon Kerfman. You're there's not many drummers. So if there's any drummers out there that are good, would you please move in to Minnesota? <laughs> well, <laughs> we need well, drummers up there. Well, you might have to sit in. You know, break out those old uh, childhood drum set, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
call up Jelly Bean. Tell tell him to come down twice a week. Right. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I mean, myself following the Minneapolis music scene for such a long while, but people out there listen. I mean, you, the music scene is is still as strong strong as ever, right? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, there's there's some serious musicians here. I right. Mean, and people are constantly working. There's great recording studios here that are. There's new studios being built all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and it's just like great i mean the record quality stuff i mean it's not like you know going down to sam's and buying a tape player you know it's, right it's you know it's just fantastic you know uh-huh and, and growing up um we've read and of course uh, we should mention that sunny t uh was an integral member of prince and the new power generation um going back to to you and prince working together he said in interviews uh you're his biggest influence on the guitar right oh yeah uh, what do you think by working with him and listening to his records, what do you think he took from you? Can you can you hear anything in there? Yeah, just a lot of discipline and harmonic modes and understanding chord changes. Okay. And when you guys were working um, in the band, the New Power Generation, when, when did that come about? I know there were a few false starts. You you might have uh, joined up, but when when did it finally happen? Um, the summer of '91. That was the first gig we played, Rock and Real. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was hot, but it was pretty cool. <laughs> you, you did about, what, two, 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 or two nights, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, of course, Diamonds and Pearls. And right, Diamonds and Pearls on. And working until on the, the gold experience. Yeah, right, until the gold experience. Do you have any um, favorite stuff that you worked on during that time as far as songs? That um, Oh, man, I haven't thought about that stuff in a while. Uh Oh, let me see. I really like the Diamonds of Pearls record. That's one of my favorite records. Right. I think just because he was so focused at the time that he did that record, you know. Mm -hmm. And you guys went uh, just all over the world with that band. and uh, Yeah, it was great. And the group was just slamming, too, you know. Yeah. How, how about um, tour-wise? Did you have any favorite tour that stood out? Um, the, I think the later tours, because we would go out and just play stuff that wasn't out. Right. And that was pretty brave of him to try to do that, even though, you know, some people thought we were nuts. Right. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of some of the media, but... Yeah. I, you I, know, I mean, basically, I mean, you got to take chances. I mean, if, you know, because, you know, being as creative as he is, you know, I mean, you know, I mean, Purple Rain is a great song, but he don't want to just play that for the rest of his life, you know. Hey, I He's think... constantly he trying to do new things, you know. I think you read, you read my mind because I, I feel the same way as you. I mean, back during the, the Gold Experience days when you guys were going out and just jamming with the, the uh, MPG Exodus material and, right. and and stuff like that that nobody heard, but it's taking a chance and, you know, I, I think it's more more exciting to see a show like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just like now, even in, in this day and age, I mean, I, I, I love seeing the, all the young talent coming up. Right. But with the digital technology that's emerging, it's, it's, you can't really take a chance. Right. Because everything is so pre-recorded, it doesn't breathe now. You know? Yeah. So if you don't record pre-recorded breathing, you know, it's still not breathing because it's stuck in that same thing. I mean, the song has the same identity. It felt the same way it did last night as it'll feel the next night and, and so forth. Mm -hmm. They're getting paid, but but it's just... Yeah. It's not true, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's it's a play by the numbers thing now, you know. Mm -hmm. so, I mean second grader can become a millionaire now. Right. And not know anything about music. And that's a sad state of affairs. You know, live musicians are I don't know how much longer we got. <laughs> you know, well, I mean in even in society, period, you know, especially with the technology coming out. You well, know. Well maybe uh to be on the positive tip, maybe it's it's just a cycle. It's going to come back like yeah. Well, that's kinda, what I'm I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that late seventies, early eighties funk right. band style. Yeah. Well, what bands were you um, getting into uh, back when you were growing up in Minneapolis? Oh man, uh, uh, Funkadelic Parliament. Uh huh. You know the early earlier records that were the crazy, their crazier records. Right. And uh, definitely Sly, no doubt about that. Oh yeah. Uh, Grand Funk Railroad. Mm hmm. They were just slamming, I thought. Vanilla Fudge. And, uh, let's see, Led Zeppelin, I used to, I love them. You know, uh, the Beatles I kind of got into. Um, I love Jocko, Jocko Pistorius and Stanley Clark. Right. You know, Miles. I mean, it's just, it's just a whole cross yeah. section of different types of music. I love classical music and 
So how big is your record collection? Oh, <laughs> it's pretty huge. I'm trying to get it all digitized now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, to keep it intact, right? Right. Yeah. Well, you want to get into another track, and we'll come back and talk a little more. I know, you, I know you're kind of pressed for time, but sure. maybe we'll play, uh, how about Save Me? That's fine. Yeah, you wrote that with Juice, right? Right. Yeah? And uh, did you record uh, the bass for it at your home studio, or was it working with the guys? Um, actually, yeah. We recorded that um, at Angel Beach here in Minneapolis. Uh-huh. Not, not at my home, but at a, at a recording studio. Okay. Here. So, uh, Sonny Thompson, Sonny T is uh, rather busy with his writing projects. We'll talk about a few things. We'll talk about his collaboration with Wayne McFarland and other folks. And also, I'm going to ask him how he got hooked up with all those people from Europe. We'll come back. This is Joe Kell in the Upper Room, Sonny T and Sons of Almighty with Save Me. That's music from Sons of Almighty mm -hmm. with uh, Save Me which is uh, co-written by my special guest, and i got to thank him once again for hanging around. His name is Sonny Thompson, and uh, so y you've been real busy besides Sons of Almighty doing a lot of writing, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah? I'm doing some writing. I'm working on something for myself, actually, trying to get the material done for that, and working on something for another project that me and Michael and Jeff Lee Johnson are doing, and we're working on something for some guy, this guy from Italy. Okay. Um, <laughs> just a whole bunch of messes going on right now. So. Yeah, one of our internet listeners emailed me, a guy by the name of Haas, and he wanted to know, uh, I guess, you know, about singing uh, lead vocals on your own stuff. So uh, how's that working out? Pretty good? You got some good stuff in the can? Oh, yeah, definitely. They should be hearing from me pretty soon, actually. Uh-huh. What, what, what do you write for yourself? that's different uh, than to a group project? Any, any difference, or it's kind of long? It feels a little different. Uh -huh. it's, it's, I don't know. You just had to hear it. It's, right. I mean, it's, it's something that's accessible, but it's harmonically really different. Okay. And, and you play a, practically all the instruments Yeah, on guitar, it? bass, keyboards. Right. You know, Michael got to play drums also. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, you know, you guys um, first met up before working with Prince, right? Mm-hmm. And, uh, where where did you guys uh, hook up together? I met him at Bonkers, actually. Okay. Did you know first off that uh, you and Michael were gonna gonna be uh, working together for a while? No, actually, no, I didn't, cause I um I just got a call out of the blue from Prince one day. Okay. You know, cause there was rumors around that he wanted to get a hold of me. He's like, man, you want to play with Mavis Staples? I'm like, sure, man, why not? So then I toured with her. Uh huh. And then that coming, I think it was. A September. That was like in the summer of '91, I think. So then that that next winter coming up, that's when I joined his group. And then we that's when the process started. We started working on the Diamonds and Pearls record that December. That December, yeah. And that's when everything started happening. Now, how, how different is it working with uh, a guy who idolized you when when you guys were growing up, and then he's running his own show? Is there? You know, was it any different? Well, he's his, well, he's his band. He's a band leader, right? You sure, know, it's a professional situation. Yeah. I mean, but I don't know. It's, for me, it was, it was cool. I mean, because the ideas that we that were translated, you know, we easy easily that what he wanted to hear, he could easily access from us. So mm -hmm. It was actually is very easy process for me. Right. Now, now um, you playing the bass in his band. Um, you know, you play all different kinds of basses throughout your career. Was there, how about uh, any particular instrument? Did you choose, uh, you were working with a five or six strings? Uh, five and six. Five and six, And yeah. upright, actually. Up. Mm -hmm. Do you have a specific bass that you, you really feel is your, your best gear? No, oh, um, I have a white Warwick bass that I just love. Mm -hmm. It's a five string. It just sounds like any bass. Right. I can get any, I can make it sound like a jazz bass. I can make it sound like... A limbic, I can make it sound like it. Then it has its own identity. It's just fantastic, you know. Do you still have the nice music shops out in uh, Minneapolis? Huh? Do you still have the nice uh, music shops out in Minneapolis for uh, guitars? Um, actually, I got this guitar from Germany. Oh, okay. I had it built for me because I'm left-handed and it's hard to find a left-handed bass. Oh, gotcha. So, <laughs> and I guess that that leads me to uh, the work you've been doing with some some great artists out out in Europe, right? Out in France. Yeah, and actually in France, and in uh, I'm getting ready in two weeks. I'm leaving 
to go to Italy to do some television shows with this artist named Georgia. Okay. I've been touring off and on with for like the last four years, actually. Go out with her for a month or two at a time. Now, who, who else works in uh, her band? Anybody from around here? Oh, yeah. Um, from here, Michael Baker. He's a um, musical director from Whitney Houston's band. Okay. Uh, he, you know, worked with her before. And a lot of Whitney players worked with her. And me and Michael Bland. We've worked with her, and Tommy actually did a tour with her too. Tommy Barbarella. So, uh, and, and of course, Tommy Barbarella is in uh, Sons of Almighty. Yeah, and I, I just think it's a great mix. Yeah, Morris he's Hazel. one of my favorites in the world. Oh man. yeah, Mr. Octopus Hands, right on all the keys. <laughs> yeah, and he'd be just funky, man. I just he, love he, him. He'd be good, you and him uh, vibing with the comedy on the bus, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because I know you guys must have had some great tours laughing, right? Oh, man, it yeah. was a laugh of fun, man. So <laughs> he's crazy, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know you, you could pull your weight with all the craziness, too. So. Oh, yeah, man. It was, it was, it was off the hook, man. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, of course, we're talking about Morris Hayes, who's with Prince right now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he came to, the, uh, to our record release CD, to yeah. our record release party. Yeah, I saw the pictures. Um. We should give thanks to Nicole for hooking uh, Sonny and myself up. Um, your publicity uh, head right there for Sons of Almighty. Oh, yeah. And uh, I saw great. Kirk Johnson up there was at the party. and Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dave Barry filled in for Jeff Lee, right? Right, right. Yeah. Jeff Lee had just had lost his, his wife in a car accident. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't even know that. make it. Wow. So you guys, um, you, you're looking for, I know... Uh, it, it, it's definite with Michael going out on tour. Excuse me, say again. Michael uh, doing his thing uh, with uh, Blonde Ambition Lady. I haven't talked to him. Yeah. So I'm sure he is. Yeah. So uh, we, we we hope he gets back soon. I know he's he's got to do his thing, but we want to see uh, Sons of Almighty on tour. And that's that would be real crazy. Oh yeah, but we yeah. definitely we definitely gonna come on tour for sure because we got to get this music out and we got to play because it's just. It sounds great on a CD, but it's really fantastic to hear it live because it's it's so inspirational it's so, and it's so spiritual, you know. it's Man, it was just like being in church almost. Yeah, I, I think that's the most prevalent comment I've seen. People who were at the uh, the CD release party at the Quest, they said, it's a great CD, but live, you just turn it up a notch. And I, I think that's something which which is missing from the live music scene. You know, oh, going, yeah. to, going to see that exciting live, like, funk and roll gospel feel and positive mm -hmm. music. Yeah. Hey, Absolutely. I got, I got to let the listeners know that uh, the tracks I've been listening with Sonny Thompson and, uh, and all his buddies, you can go to sonsofalmighty.com for all ordering information, and it, it's just a click, and you just go to secure online ordering and, uh, you know, support independent music because we know how tough it is out there. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of the independent music is, is eons better than what they're going through the big companies. So absolutely. So hey, before not we, trying to slight them, you know. Yeah. But I mean, it's, you know, machines are, you know. <laughs> yeah. We ain't gonna go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, we're you just know, trying to do our thing. I'm not trying to cut nobody else down. Yeah. I mean, you guys, you guys are cutting your own path, and hey, if they come around for the party, it's all the more better. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, maybe you can help me out. This is kind of off of the Sons of Almighty, okay? I got, mm -hmm. I got, a, I got a trivia question, which you may have participated in, okay? Sure. You, you remember Jesse Johnson's review, right? Yeah. And, and you, you did some of the live dates? No. Oh, you didn't do the live I dates? I just did the uh, Shockadelica record, and I did the video that he had out with Sly. Okay. And that was it. <laughs> okay. Oh, I thought you went on tour, so no. there, there goes that question. <laughs> Because <laughs> he, he performed out in uh, New York years back, and I'm I just trying to figure out the club that he played yeah. at. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesse's out in uh, California, I think. Uh, yeah, either there or Arizona. I keep hearing Arizona, though. Yeah. <laughs> still still laying down that great guitar. So. Yeah, he's a great guitar player, man. Yeah. So you, you got bunkers tonight, right? Yep. Yeah, what time you guys usually hit the stage? Um, probably around nine thirty, but I got to actually get out of here now. Yeah, that, that's where we're gonna kind of <laughs> kind of let you go and and get things going and yeah, get out there and get on stage. And you, Julius is gonna be there. Yeah, Margie Cox, she's yep. there. Yeah, who who else is gonna be there tonight? You think? Um, probably everybody that's yeah. in, that's in town. And if you're a drummer, come, come to come here out. to Minneapolis. Yeah. If you're a drummer, 
please come to Minneapolis. We right. need drummers here. <laughs> Maybe get Prince on there for a little bit. Huh? Maybe get Prince behind the drums. Who knows? Oh, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, I, I've never been out there. I've been out to Minneapolis, but never out to see you guys play at Bunkers. But yeah, They I mean, should come through, man, especially yeah. now that it's getting warmer. You don't want yeah. to come here in the winter. Yeah, i, I got to stop up there on my way to the Montreal Jazz Festival. That would be something. Yeah, man, for Yeah. Sure. So uh, i got to thank you, Sonny T, Sonny Thompson, for stopping by the Upper Room. All righty. You're welcome, man. It's a, it's a pleasure, man. I really enjoyed myself. Yeah, and... Uh, continued success with uh, Sons of Almighty The Great Tribulation. We're going to go out with a song you co-wrote, Thy Kingdom Come. All right. God bless you all out there. How, how about this song? Is there anything left in the can on this track? or, or No. Like I was saying, like that, the end part? That's about it, right? That's it. Okay. Maybe a <laughs> remix or something. <laughs> all right. Thanks, Sonny. All right. Take care. Okay. <laughs>